Hey, War Pugs, we're back in with SCP-001 when day breaks. And how many of you guys have been looking forward to Undublin? Because I know ever since un the end of Unlondon, I have been just sitting here like, what's going to happen with these people? You know, every... Oh, my God. So, when we last left our intrepid heroes that were in Unlondon, they have been gradually pressed out and... Very few of them made it to a boat where the bobbies were keeping... Essentially, the bobbies were essentially protecting them while Unlondon was being overran. We are now going to Undublin. And Undublin, you guys have told me several times, you can't wait to see how I feel about this or what happens when it... I am going to be sad when I run out of these to watch. To be quite honest, I'm going to be very, very depressed. Now... SCP Illustrated, now Mr. Illustrated, has done an awesome job with this. Um, and it's just, it's a credit to, the, like, uh, everything that he has done so far. Um, how well this looks, how amazing this looks. This, this still shot right here looks creepy, and I love it. And great thing is, I recently got messaged by the person he had voice acting in the first and second episodes, which was a treat to be honest with you um oh my god it's because of videos like this and because of other things like this is the reason i like to do lore this is the reason i like to do lore now granted my five-ish minute lore is stupid and it doesn't it it, it doesn't invoke any provoking thoughts except what is wrong with this person but i'm hoping to be able to do something that provokes the kind of response that i get that I personally get from watching stuff like this. From watching, you know, things like this. 001 is a terrifying, terrifying thing because it just keeps coming. And there's nothing you can do to stop it. All that being said, um, I'm recording this before my live stream tonight where we will be checking out part 5 of the Oro Ouroboros cycle. Or the Erebus cycle. Whatever you guys want to call it. In any case, guys, let's get into it. This video's sponsor, and we'll get started. Escape oh. from Site 19 have released an amazing new game card, When Day Breaks. This one is really nice. going to raise the stakes in your game if you draw this card. Fail a single task, and you become a 001 entity. If you nice. then roll onto or over another player, you have to perform a fight roll. If the player you have passed or joined loses, they also become a 001 entity and it's game over. You have failed to escape Site 19. Lovely. There are two ways to get your hands on this card. Head over to Board Game Geek and leave an authentic review and rating at least 50 words in length and you will be sent one. Or purchase the game now. Every new order will now contain the When Day Breaks card. Use the code below nice. to get 10% off your order. So find the link below, use the code on the screen, and see if you and your mates can escape from Site 19. Trying to escape from Site 19, Previously, guys. Jacob, Elise, and Kira were attached to a research team stationed in the city of Unlondon. They had the good fortune of being underground when the sun melted the world they knew above. Relentless, though, the flesh soon found them and began sweeping across the city. While the bobbies rallied and mounted a defense against the flesh. That, this, like, this, in my opinion, his Unlondon artwork was some of the best stuff that he's done for some of the best just in terms of general mood setting because you have two you have two scps that are creepy to begin with going off toe to toe flesh the trio fled to the houses of parliament as on london drowned in and that i literally want on my wall fire and the bobbies made their last stand the survivors found a ship to take them away from this fiery hell a note inside promised them safety in a pint if they could make it to safety in a pint on dublin Recording 7. Last night we passed by what I can only assume is an approximation of the Flemish coast. There were these strange mechanical creatures arrayed along the shore. They all had a, a single shining lens at the centre of their faces and clockwork bodies. It's hard to describe. They were quite a way away, but they moved along the coast to follow us. Some were on all fours, some were mostly upright. All were loping along without breaking line of sight with the large lenses that made up their faces. Elise and Kira were both fascinated. Oh my god, I wondered nice. To myself what kind of horrors would await us if we actually debarked onto that dark continent. Look at that. I, I love it. Still, I... we're making good time. 
though there's the problem of the ripples in the water a dozen or so metres back. Kira's sure we're being followed and I would tend to concur. But what's following us? I would have sworn a few hours ago I spotted a single fleshy eyeball just no. breaking the surface. But by the time I got a lease, it was gone. Kira thinks it's possible that there are other monsters in these waters, and maybe she's right. We only speak in hushed whispers now for fear of awakening something else. Elise is possibly dealing with things the least well out of all of us. Uh huh. Yesterday she just started laughing. Kira and I tried to quiet her down, but it didn't do any good. Eventually she started to quietly cry, and that settled her down. I'm not sure what to do. None of us are, to be honest. Recording aids. Agent Hawkswith has been making these audio logs for some sort of therapeutic purpose. Sounds silly, but frankly, he's the sanest of us all, so I'm going to give it a try. My name is Agent Kira North, former head of security for the SCP-1678 project. I say former because I'm pretty sure 1678 is either burned to cinders or drowning <laughs> melted flesh right now. Either way, there's not much to go back to. Hawkswith is trying to comfort Dr. Caperson right now, and uh, I don't know how much longer she's going to last. Yeah. Hawkswith is a good sort. He's a decent head on his shoulders. The man knows when to put his nose to the grindstone and risk a little to gain a lot. At least Caperson is a mess. She was on temporary assignment when the world ended, and five will get you ten that she's involved romantically with Hawkswith. Huh. He wouldn't admit to it, but I can see the way he looks at her. So we drag her along anyway. Hawkswith is probably right about her, actually. The number of living humans on Earth is probably in the thousands of most if the sun's gone wrong, so we'll need every man and woman we have to bring back civilization. I tried to use the radio on board, but all I got out of it was silence. It's possible we're not in the range of anyone or anything yet, but it's worth a try. Like, this is actually very true. In order to rebuild civilization, there, even if they find a way to combat 001, humanity's existence is basically on a knife edge. SCP-2000 could really do the trick, but at the same time, you'd have to, with an SCP like this, with this 001 proposal, you would have to quite literally reforge humanity into an underground dwelling species. I'll give it a test every other hour or so, and we'll keep alert to any incoming messages or warnings. Because the other thing is that we're definitely being followed. I don't want to spook anyone, but I saw the creature under the water this morning. It's about twice the size of the nope. ship and moving at exactly our pace. Nope. This little steamer is just putting away without a care, but I guarantee you, as soon as we get to where we're going, that thing is going to make itself known. When that happens, I'll be ready. And I'll make sure Hawks with this, too. Hopefully Dr. Caverson is below decks when that happens. Huh. Recording 9. Kira and Elise are below decks right now. There's a palpable sense of dread. That I haven't felt since the night before the attack on the tent city. Elise says we ought to be in visual range of the Irish coast soon, and it, it won't be long after that that we'll be docked in Dublin. Or un-Dublin, I guess. Yeah. After the weird monsters I saw along the European coast, I am a lot less confident in the safety of land down here. Where else are we going to go, though? There's only enough canned food on board to last us another few days, at most. I'm going to go check on Elise. Kira's not exactly the most caring person in the world. <laughs> Recording 10. I love how friendly they are with each other. Ah, allies. I see your boat on the horizon. Refugees of the great city of Unlondon. Come now and see the fruits of my original labor. This is Kira North. I would like to advise you that we are currently being followed by an unknown entity. That is a troubling notion, but not one I was unable to predict. A flare is being fired from the docks. Make speed in that direction and pray. Oh my Copy god. That. I see the flare. I love this! Oh my god. And see, the best part about it is he's done these over a length of time, so you can see how his art style has evolved and his storytelling method has evolved. Watching something like this, like, for me, reminds me, like, for me, I do my own lore, and it's like the way I presented the lore when I first started doing it, and now, is so radically different. It's so outrageously different. 
I'm sure he feels the same way when he, you know, sees stuff like this because this is an absolute evolution of storytelling and uh, like like it, absolute visual storytelling and um yeah. We will make our way to you. Do not bother slowing down if you feel you are in danger. Crash if you must, and be prepared to depart as soon as you do. Dublin Bay is prepared to receive you. I copy that. We'll see you when we land. Recording 11. The cause of the Republicans is just and grand, but oh, there are lovely. greater threats to consider now. Our illustrious city's creator is staying here for a time. I know, I know, we threw him out on his ear when he opposed the unionization of the Guard, but as much hate as we might have for him, we owe him at least a small debt. On London has fallen, and with it, the whole of under England is sure to follow. Under Scotland may swiftly come under threat as well, and we stand to lose much by holding to old grudges. Yeah. I know that hatred burns in the hearts of many of our citizens, but we are better than he is. I know this. I know your true hearts are filled with love and understanding, and an urge to burn the monsters that have begun to attack even our city with ever hotter fire. And we will. Un Dublin will not fall. We refuse to allow for that possibility. I love this. Recording 12. <laughs> My god. These people are not fucking around. It wasn't a flesh creature chasing us after all. It, it was an amalgamation of clockwork creatures, like the ones we saw on the beach in Flanders. They somehow joined together into a massive approximation of a sea creature. And as soon as we got oh, close to the wow. docks, it rose up out of the water like some grand mechanical kraken. The first tentacle that rose from the water was blown apart by cannon fire, and it didn't stop. We were fearful for our lives, but the barrage was precisely aimed. The mechanical creature was bombarded and, and fell apart quickly. In seconds, there was no trace on the surface that it had ever existed beyond a slick of oil. Huh. We were able to slow down enough to not damage our ship, and when we hopped off the boat, we were greeted by... I, I don't know how to describe it. Victorian-era gentlemen? Faces wrapped in bandages... But they also wore very smart suits, cloaks, and top hats. Nice. Each carried a massive cane or a stick as well. I suppose they're this place's equivalent of the Bobbies, but they appear to be able to speak. One okay. asked me if I was all right and directed us into the city. There are other people here. Most appear to live in squalor, begging along the thoroughfare, but a few men and women appear to be of some means and walk along the roads, mostly ignoring the beggars. This might change everything. Yeah? Elise has perked up considerably since we've landed. She's theorizing that Unlondon was unfinished, while this place is much more complete. It certainly seems that way to me, but she's the expert. Is it possible that we could live here? Maybe. Recording 13. Maybe. No. Lent me his recorder. I I'm actually quite astonished at the battery life of the thing, but I suppose it is to be expected from Foundation Tech. Hey, wait a minute, is that... Okay. Uh, either way, I, I should introduce myself. I'm Dr. Elise Capperson, former research assistant of the 1678 Project Heads, Drs. Mills and Hyatt. I'm unsure of what part of the city we're in, but the cannon and gunfire is constant. We're carrying our own weapons, but we've still been hurried into a library across the street from the bob I have to assume was our destination. The guards are standing watch just inside the door, prepared to... I the place. Mm. There are other civilians here. Some seem entrenched into this underworld aesthetic, and I suspect they've either been here a while or were made down here. But there are other survivors from above besides just us. This is astonishing. Yeah, a little bit. I had imagined that once the sun went wrong, that the whole world was slated to die. But uh, apparently, I was incorrect. I haven't met any other Foundation personnel yet, but there's plenty of people from Dublin. No one is sure about numbers, but it's suspected there might be more than a few hundred survivors from above. And another woman- This is the first positive, like, actual positive thing that I've actually heard from this. And I gotta give credit to the voice actress here. Like, there's just- twinge of hope in this it's good woman who i am less sure of 
I watched other survivors go up to her and thank her profusely. I haven't been close enough to overhear anything yet, but I think Agent North recognizes her. They're both keeping their distance from each other, though. The firefight outside appears to be dying down. They must be using something beyond cannon and firearms if they're going to win this, but we can't get a good look at any actual fighting. I see lots of red glare coming from the windows outside, but who knows. Either way, I'm going to ask North about that weird woman. Hey, uh, Jacob, thank you for this. You are right. I'm doing fine, just, uh, thank you. Which button turns this off? Recording 14. <laughs> nice! 90% sure that's Director Moose, which means it's possible the Wanderer's library is being used to evacuate people. I don't Ooh. know if Moose recognizes me or not. It doesn't matter, though. At the end of the world, it's expected for people to call on any help they can get. Yeah, Moose take has it. contacts in the library. If they want to help save people, then here we are. I have to assume this library is some sort of nexus point, but that's also not really any of my business. Not everyone here is from Devlin, so they didn't come from directly above. I have to wonder what's going on in the library itself right now. That's above my pay grade, Whoa. if we're being honest. Okay. Oh, that's I was about to say. If they can open ways in and out, then maybe there are people safe there, too. Maybe. How many extra-dimensional spaces are housing people far away from the sun? Humanity's gonna make it through this one way or another. Diminished, but standing, I think. Recording 15. Nice. And Dublin is safe again, for now. We left the library and the whole refugee situation they've got going on over there. It's probably for the best, resources being what they are. Then we went over to the pub. There were glasses for all of us. Even some of the guards were there. Nice. Their bandages lowered to reveal a, a burnt, red, cracked mouth to drink through. I'm not 100% sure what's going on there, but they're all friendly enough and frighteningly competent. What the creator of Unlondon said to me just now has shaken me to my very core, though, and I, I don't know how to respond yet. North okay. and Anderson haven't spoken yet, but I want to make sure this gets recorded. First, the creator of Unlondon isn't a person. I, I don't know how to describe it. The place where he should have been sitting was just a starry hole in space. No matter what angle we looked at him, the edges had some sort of skin. He moved like he had bones, but that's all. And he finished quite a few pints of Guinness before finishing his request that we help him destroy the entire world. Say his again? plan is madness, and also maybe one of the best things I've ever heard. He wants to trigger a nuclear war. North knows a it honestly, at this point, would not be the worst thing that could happen, considering. It would not be the worst thing that could happen. I'm just saying, the world is screwed. You might want to do the most horrible thing possible to protect it. A bit more than me, her clearance being higher than mine, but when the creator mentioned SCP-1984, she seemed to know exactly what he was talking about. Huh. Some Russian Cold War relic that is ready to initiate nuclear Armageddon at a moment's notice. The creator of this place seems to think that if we can gain access to a British nuclear sub, we might be able to launch the missiles into Russian airspace, triggering an, an all-out attack as a response. If the flesh burns in fire, he said, what's better than fire everywhere at once? Right. I hardly can disagree, but Elise was against it at first. She mentioned the nuclear winter, how the sun would be blocked out for years. Right. And then she stopped mid-sentence, and we all realized what this could mean. Exactly. And that's how a hole where a man should be, in a city that doesn't exist, in a world with a broken sun, just convinced us to trigger an end-of-the-world scenario in order to stop another end-of-the-world from progressing. Like, seriously, this is... This is... Like, all the episodes have been really good, but they've all had this really dark... And, and see, this is the bad thing. This is how far this has progressed. I'm actually hoping for nuclear apocalypse, because that's how bad this is. I'm saying that would be a positive thing. Heavens help us. We're going topside today. The Foundation has a submarine moored in Dublin, and we're going to take it out and start looking around. Elise... Elise is going to stay behind and help care for the refugees. Mm -hmm. I think I'll leave this recorder with her. I'd hate to see it sink to the bottom of the ocean after all. 
someone ought to know what happened down here. So, this is Agent Hawksworth signing off, I guess. People of On Dublin, you have fought with the fervor expected from a people of such courage and grace. The invaders are once again repelled and at minimal losses, but not all is well in On Dublin. The entrance to the surface will be shortly closed, permanently. Mm -hmm. I know many of you came through the stairway and expected family to follow. We have kept the stairway open for as long as we could, but despite the efforts of our brave guard, it is impossible to do so forever. True. Given the stairway is clogged with burning, screaming flesh monsters, I do not believe there was much point in it remaining open. Your loved ones are the ones around you right now. The rest have succumbed to the horrors above. I apologize for the harshness of my tone and the news I must deliver, but I believe wholeheartedly that we will survive this terror and come out alive. This is the on first the other side. Even now, a select group of guards and other survivors are making a trip through the portal to the above world. The last traveler is to make the jump for some time, and they leave with a plan to bring the fight to the enemy. I cannot tell you what this plan is, for who knows who else might be listening, but know this. We will retake the surface. We will emerge into that bright, shining world full of vigor and resolve. And with the sun restored. I swear it. That is all for now. Thank you, my friends. And may God save Ireland. I love this series. I absolutely love this series. And that concludes Undublin. I really <laughs> hope you enjoyed this video, and please be sure to like and subscribe if you did. Lots more when day breaks to come. A massive, massive thank you to all of the incredible voice actors for helping in this video, namely the Vulgan, Tastraws, and Lumi. All their links. So, Lumi was in this. I thought she might have been in this. I thought I recognized her voice. I didn't recognize the Vulgan's voice. That's kind of impressive. Um, consider how many... Are below, but it, it goes to show you, you know... He, he is a talented voice actor. That's great. Oh my god, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Guys, this was legitimately the best one of the whole series so far. Because so the entire time it's been um, a lot of darkness, a lot of despair. Really setting, setting, setting the tone. And then all of a sudden you have in Dublin. And I'm cheering for nuclear war. I'm cheering for nuclear apocalypse. That's how bad the situation has gotten on the surface. Absolutely outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. I love this. Um, guys, Mr. Illustrated, again, has been branching away from SCP. I have not been able to check anything because you guys haven't put it down there yet. As soon as something gets down there in the, in the Discord, I'm going to be checking it out because I cannot wait to see what he is doing now. As far as everything else goes, guys... If you have not subscribed to Mr. Illustrated, you just saw why I enjoy this so much. And I have no doubt that you'll have the same kind of sensation I do checking stuff out like, like this. Check, run over to him. Subscribe to him. Just do that, okay? Just do that. Aside from all of that, guys, if you'd like to support my channel, just leave a like and a comment down below. I have merch down below done by Valk as well and my Patreon. I'm going to be heading out. A um, lot more stuff to do tonight. Um, you guys are going to be seeing this after the live stream of uh, the Orb War Cycle, most likely. So I'll see you guys then, before you see this. Which is kind of weird, I'm just... I'm an idiot. You guys know this. I'll catch you next time. This was, this was great.